Welcome to The Warehouse. Have you ever heard a sermon and thought, how in the world did he discover that? Or where did he get that idea? Every week at Cornerstone Church, two teams dig into the biblical text that will be taught during our weekend services. We spend hours talking about the text, the context, the culture of the time, you name it. But you can't stuff all that into a 30-minute message. That's where we come in. We're going to show you the stuff in the warehouse that didn't make it to the stage. Hey guys, I got a fun one this week. Sweet. Bring it. When you look at the fruit of the Spirit, which one are you currently feeling the need to grow in the most? Gentlemen first. So is that you or me? Oh, you're the gentleman. <laughs> I'm the gentleman. <laughs> so I would be free the, free the Spirit. So, I mean, it's all one thing. It's not like multiple fruits of the Spirit. It's different aspects of the fruit of the Spirit. I think for me, I would probably have to say um, it's between love and gentleness mm. for me. Um, I think probably love. Yeah. Where, where have you noticed that? Like that gag we've talked about having gaps a lot. Where have you noticed that? Where you're like, mm, yeah, love is love is the. This one is me. getting very real on this podcast, but I, I trust you all as my brothers and sisters. Yeah, we won't we won't tell anyone. I am prone to bitterness. Um, like it's one of my like more habitual issues. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's it's kind of sick. I mean, it just ends up like I just start getting upset with people over kind of silly stuff and just tucking it away and like not really saying anything about it, just getting a generally ill feeling mm -hmm. toward people. Yeah. And it's funny because it can like really start in one area and then branch out to pretty much everybody. Mm. And I hate it. Um, and I would say that it it largely stems from uh, lacking love. Mm. Mm. Um. Oh man. Especially when you get into like first Corinthians 13, that love covers a multitude of sins and those mm -hmm. kind and bears all things and all that. It's like, okay, that's, that's me lacking in love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh man. That's Stephanie. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say like, man, that's pretty big. Like knowing you, you would never think that you struggle with bitterness. Mm. That's because I have very high self-control. <laughs> so I don't say the things. Yeah. But, but just internally. Like yeah. Yeah. You feel right. them. Mm. So, which leads into mine is gentleness. Um, sometimes I'm not very good at my responses where I can respond with lack of respect um, and I can react sometimes mm. worse than I would like to. Mm -hmm. mm. Man, that's now, pretty cool. When, so when, cool that when I, did you feel that? Like when? When did you feel like that? Yeah, I need I need work there. Uh, a lot of self evaluating lately, and mm -hmm. just like learning where I need to grow in areas of my life. What about you, Jay? Yeah, as I'm uh, remembering the list that I have deeply memorized and the descriptions <laughs> for them. As he's looking at a list right now. I am holding up my laptop so Jay can see the descriptions. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, man. Ooh, ooh yeah. So, so self-control is always one for me. That's So when we did those, when we did those uh, assessments a few months mm -hmm. back and then, and then working mm -hmm. through some of the uh, practices we can do to grow in those, Self-control is, is the one for me. Yeah. Um, it, specifically self-control when it comes to my health mm. and, and my weight, because I'm a, I'm a, a stress eater. I'm mm -hmm. a celebratory eater. Mm -hmm. I am a bored eater. Uh, Same. And, food for every occasion. Same. Yeah. Same. And, and, and every occasion for a food. Mm -hmm. um, well, I should, I should coin that. <laughs> but yeah, so self-control is, is way up there. And even we were talking about intermittent fasting yesterday. I think you were in Me? while somebody, while people, while it was being talked about. Yeah. And uh, told that I'm on an, an 11 to 6.30. I was there for that conversation. Yeah. So my window is 11 mm -hmm. to 6.30. And 11, I nail it. 
So nice. you know, there are times I'll go, I'll go till noon. Yeah, no problem in the morning. But man, when that sun sets, um, you get snacky. Oh, snacky! Mm-hmm. And and there are times not hungry at all. But then mm-hmm. I get mealy. So oh. not just snacky. I'm like having bowls of cereals. Dinner. Yeah, yeah. mealy is cereals. just a yeah. disgusting word. <laughs> <laughs> uh, meal. So M E A L dash Y. Okay, yeah. that's mealy better. is that's something not else entirely. Disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but in, then also, as I was looking, uh, peace and gentleness on that list as well. So uh, peace in me uh, of, um, you, know, you, you name it, uh, I've struggled with imposter syndrome before, struggled with mm-hmm. um, just trying to find my place in this world kind of kind of stuff. If you wanna... looking for a reason. Yeah, I was looking at Stephanie. <laughs> Find my place in this world. That's a Michael W. Smith song from the 80s. <laughs> Never heard of it. Yeah. Um, Actually, I think I have, but like mainly because of like you guys busting yeah. out a song or something like that. <laughs> Not like I've listened to that song. It's, man, it's a power ballad. It's one of those. So yeah, Keep self-control. Going. And then so and then gentleness, kind of the same. So my it, well, so self-control is good in one part because I don't always say everything that's going mm. in my head. And, um, well, we even a couple months ago in uh, our staff meeting, I just had to come out and and confess to specifically you and Dustin about some some things that I just for for since we've been here, just some of those things that have been just rolling around my head that I'm just mm-hmm. like, Ugh! and um, yeah. so yeah, and all uh, so yeah, love. I need to work on love. I need to work on. Uh, You're peace, just gonna name the whole patience. List. I need to work. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So why are we talking? Why did we bring that up today? No idea. Uh, yeah, it it was a ploy for me to get some blackmail material that didn't go well. Ah, um, sorry. <laughs> so sorry. Upsetting. But today we're in Matthew 16, 13 to twenty three, and we're talking about. The aspect of hypocrisy. And specifically, the title of this week's sermon is You're No Better. Why are Christians such hypocrites? So, this mm-hmm. series has been one in which we're just facing reasons people would doubt, f- facing reasons, uh, complaints people have against the faith, critiques, skepticism of those, yeah, mm-hmm. for the critiques of those skeptical of the faith. And today we're like, yeah, why would I want to be with you guys? Because you're just a bunch of hypocrites. Uh, An interesting place to go to in Scripture to talk about it. Matthew 16, 13 through 23 today. Oh, yeah. I really liked this study. It was, it was fun. so fun. Yeah, yeah, it was a fun time being in that room. Uh, there are times I really wish we just recorded that meeting mm. sometimes to play as this. And that would have been a fun one to do. It was a fun conversation that we got to have. Yeah. Yeah, So we're going to try to go word for word and recreate the whole thing. (laughs) And uh, I try to bring that to us a lot of the time. And you're like, Stephanie, it's not a repeat of yesterday. But today Mm, is that day. Is that what you're saying? And I'm going to, so not only am I going to play me, I'm also going to be the narrator. Are you going to be Michael's voice? Michael's voice. uh, Charlie Cox was in there for a little while today. Mm -hmm. I'll be Charlie's voice. Mm. And uh, Parker, since Parker's not uh, at the mic today. Mm -hmm. Morgan was absent, so. I feel like Nathan could do Parker's voice. Ooh, That's the job of the the narrator. You just want to hear his Australian accent again. I can't do that. Uh, He does a better British accent, I think. Isn't that right? No. Let's not go here again. Okay. <laughs> they heard us try it before, and it was not pretty. Yeah. Hey, right. what was your big idea, Stephanie? Um, who you say Jesus is can determine your relationship with him. Can or does? Should? May? Must? Does? Shall. There we go. Shall. Does. Shall. <laughs> <laughs> who you say Jesus is does determine your relationship with him. <laughs> I thought in the room you just said determines and left out that modifier. <laughs> Which would actually be. Okay. Yeah. It's. No. <laughs> Let's keep going. All right. What'd you have? True knowledge of Christ is a gift from the Father. Is a gift from the Father? <laughs> yes. Are we just going to 
question. Shall. <laughs> Shall a gift from the Lord? <laughs> just <laughs> just gonna <laughs> grammatical sense, Jay. All right. Oh, Jack Allen. To try it again. I, I stepped all over that one. True knowledge of Christ is a gift from the Father. Boy, that's not bad. And so again, we're in Matthew 16, 13 to 23. What's My yours? big yeah, idea yeah. Come was on. what we set our minds to determines if we're building blocks or stumbling, stumbling blocks. Stumbling blocks. Boom. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah. So we want to be building blocks and not stumbling blocks. And we'll see in a bit. Clever girl. Where I came up. I, thank you. Did you say <laughs> clever gal? Clever girl. <laughs> was, was that Silence of the Lambs? <laughs> uh, it's Jurassic Park. Jura- <sighs> the Raptors. Yes. <laughs> dinosaur movie. I, yeah, my kid loves dinosaurs. Okay. Okay. But I wouldn't be able to quote it. Hey, what kind of context do we have for Matthew 16? You started off yesterday. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. I had about 35 minutes worth of context for Caesarea Philippi. But you have to break it down (laughs) to like just a minute. Condense it to one minute. (laughs) (laughs) No. So uh, this is the farthest point north. So Caesarea Philippi and then the next chapter they're in. uh, They're on probably Mount Hermon. It doesn't say. The and first... I didn't look at the right place, uh, the right way to pronounce Mount Hermon. Mm. So it's probably not Herman, because Herman is a pretty Americanized <laughs> last name. Herman. So uh, Hermon, but that's French. So I'm just going to roll with Herman. Uh, Mount Herman is in the next uh, chapter, probably, mm-hmm. where the uh, transfiguration happened. Mm-hmm. They said they were up high. And in that area, that was the highest point in that area. So this area, the farthest point north in Matthew's gospel. Caesarea Philippi is about 25 miles north of the Sea of Galilee. The city itself was located in one of the largest springs that fed the Jordan River in that time. Numerous temples were built in the city in the Hellenistic and Roman periods, most of which were dedicated to the Greek god Pan. The Benias Waterfall comes out it, this very cool thing and it uh we're going to be talking about this later too that this waterfall is from the spring that comes out of a cave so used to anyway earthquakes since have have in 1967 kind of wrecked the the cool aesthetics mm. of that area but there was the spring that came out of a cave and started this spring that fed the Jordan River um so in the Old Testament, Caesarea Philippi may have come uh, into the, the the text. Could have been either a place called Baal Hermon or Herman or <laughs> Baal Gad. <laughs> <laughs> Baal Herman. Baal Herman up oh. in Caesarea, Arkansas. <laughs> uh, Wait, what? No. Yep. So the, the site was later named Panias after the Greek god Pan, and we talked about that, him working there. You stole my thing. Yes, because we didn't want to get bleeped out. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? You took my thing. <laughs> I, had it, I had it written down. I had it written oh, down. okay. Whoa. So there's this cool part. So We're going to uh, bleep out turd, right? <laughs> we don't say that on yeah, the air. The part that I thought she was going to bleep didn't yeah. actually get bleeped. Uh, so... Peter, of co- and we'll talk about this too later. Peter, of course, means rock. And this guy writing on Notre Dame's uh, website said, so Jesus may have been using this location to create this bold image for how this rock is to serve as a foundation for the church while in this place where this awesome rock mm-hmm. face is uh, here. So it's certainly to be solid and strong, just as the cliff. And at the same time, it's also supposed to give life like the spring that flows from it. So if Jesus likens the foundation of the church to this place, it means that the church should be a rock and a river, a stronghold and a mission, both powerful and life-giving. It's to be a fortress that bears fruit and feeds people wherever it flows. Wow. I just thought that was an awesome thing there. And like I said, the next chapter is the transfiguration. And there are some pretty cool things about the apocryphal books of Enoch and Jubilees. We don't talk about this. But... <laughs> That comes so you know we can't take them as gospel truth, but it's pretty cool. Um, pretty some pretty cool. There's some history in there. I was just joking about yeah. So we're not going to be preaching from from the book of Enoch, Mm -hmm. probably. Probably not. (laughs) 
So Caesarea Philippi was built by Herod, um, great Herod. Herod great the Great. Herod. I like it. Great Herod. <laughs> and he gave it to his son, Philip, and that's hey, Herod, how... That's great. <laughs> great Herod's ghost. <laughs> <Is that laughs> and that's Lord? where Caesarea Philippi came from. Peneus. Did I say it right? Wow. I said it. I think so. Yesterday, <laughs> whenever I was trying to say it, it did not sound like that no. at all. You can guess what it probably sounded like. <laughs> <laughs> um, was named after the Greek god Pan. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> named after the Greek god Pan, who was um, the god of the wild shepherds and flocks. So he was the one that had like the goat's legs and the horns and um, so the and flute. flute. Yeah. Mm. So I got to listen to Mr. a... He was, yeah. Is that what like fawns are modeled after? I think so. Okay. It's interesting. Okay. And, and if, if it's not... Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And if not, Emmy will let us know. Yeah. I bet you would. Bring it, Emmy. Um, so another thing that I got to read about this Greek God was he, so we'll get into that in a little bit, but he is, um, the only Greek God to have died and you backed it up, Nathan, with what was that? Yeah. So it's like, whatever, if you <laughs> just say I like, he's that. the only one who died, it, it's like, hang on. <laughs> there, was a, there was a pause. There was it's a like, pause in the room. Right. And they're like, well, and then, then you hear the about? clicking on the laptop. <laughs> and they're like, Stephanie's lost her mind. Yeah. It's like, I would say. None of them have died because none, <laughs> none of them of were them alive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Iron Man, Iron Man was the only Marvel hero that died. Okay. Spoilers. Yeah. But anyway, it was. Yeah, he he did. Because they none of them actually lived. Yeah. What? Anyway, so yeah, there there is it was. Um, which what which story was that it? From? That, yep. Uh, oh, I have to look it, it up. Anyway. Um, but there was a historian that like reported that there was a ship that was sailing past the coast of Italy and heard um, that the god Pan is dead. And so that was actually right around like 8030, um, which is like in the 17 to 67 range, I think, or something like that, or f- 17 to 47, maybe. Anyway, it's it's like a really interesting thought of like, if there was at the same time that Jesus was dying on a cross, there was, you know, maybe a report that this Greek god was dead. Even mm-hmm. though he never existed, but they mm-hmm. presumed him dead. Yeah. Kind of cool. It is pretty neat. And then also um, the Gates of Hell, which uh, Gates of Hades, which you were talking about, Jay, was like there was an entrance place into the cave. And that is also what they would call the Gates of Hades. There were, yeah, there were several, several religions around that time mm-hmm. that thought that maybe that cave in particular was an entry point into the underworld. Yep. And so they would call it, they call, there were certain uh, religions that called that area, that cave in particular, the Gates of Hades. Yeah. Plutarch. There Plutarch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was yeah, the historian yeah, yeah. who yep. recorded that, yep. the death of Pan. I mean, a lot of people love to read Plutarch. So. Oh, yeah. That's like I an do. everyday Just reading like for people. Sitting on my nightstand. Yep. Yeah. If you also love reading Plutarch, email us. Warehouse at cornerstone dot team. That's good. Oh, so one of the things I didn't mention yesterday, which was which was interesting in those uh, in the the books of Enoch and and Jubilees in the apocryphal books that the that Catholic Bibles have, but Protestant Bibles do not, is that uh, and again Mount Hermon, Mount Hermon, Hermon may have been the place where the Nephilim were conceived and and brought about let's talk about the nephilims Whoa. guys yeah. i love talking about oh, them we could go is... on and yeah. on about them but genesis we're not going 6. to so let's go open our bibles to <laughs> genesis 6 yeah or your bible app so it was so it was just an interesting <laughs> uh interesting read that i heard there that's okay. cool and some people never mind we don't need to go down that yeah. i was gonna so going. so warehouse not. warehouse after hours is where we'll talk about the nephilim. i feel like we could i'm ready <laughs> <laughs> hey, Matt, any other context? I was just going to say, like, on. so you, you guys went hard on the, like, immediate context. I think, like, the big picture context oh, of Matthew yeah. is pretty cool to get in mind. And it's just, like, always helps me frame it up. So mm-hmm. Matthew is, uh, he's a Jew. He's a, he was a tax collector. So um, what do you, what do you I say? just wanted to do big eyes and be like, I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> you just blew my mind. Um. And uh, he wrote to a largely Jewish audience. Um, whenever 
like we read his gospel, like one of his main um, points is that he's trying to establish Jesus as the the mm. Jewish Messiah, mm-hmm. yeah. um, also as uh, the king from the line of David, as a new Moses. It, we, it's where we get this, uh, the Sermon on the Mount. There's a, you know, a similar account in Luke with the Sermon on the Plain, but we have the Sermon on the Mount uh, in Matthew where, where you just really have this uh, vivid imagery of Jesus as king talking about like what his citizens, what the mm. citizens of the kingdom of heaven behave like, mm-hmm. um, given kind of a rule of life for them. Which is and the so, best sermon ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're actually a little spoiler. Yeah, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. We're planning on teaching through it this summer. Because it's the best sermon ever. It is. <laughs> it is. I don't know. Billy Graham gave one in St. Louis one time. <laughs> That's a close runner up. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I just Jesus. think it's helpful and I think that it is significant context just to think that like one of Matthew's main points is establishing that Jesus is that king from the line of David, that he yeah. is the promised uh, prophesied Messiah, because yeah. I think that comes into play here. And previously, Jesus and the disciples have spent most of their time in Capernaum, mm-hmm. ministering, teaching, because Capernaum was a, a, a city of trade and, and a lot of people in the area, and things got a little rocky for them. So mm-hmm. they were they were leaving. The people were starting to turn against them. So they left and headed north. Mm. All right. Had you guys read anything? Um, so Caesarea Philippi, it's different than the region of Caesarea. So it's a city and it's not within the re- region of Caesarea. So yeah. it's like, it's different. Caesarea, but it makes sense because it, Caesarea would be tied to Caesar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so there's like a temple to Caesar there, I think. Um, uh, Caesarea was on the coast. Yeah. Of the Mediterranean? Uh, I don't know. But yeah, Caesarea think... Philippi, they had a worship place for Caesar and to Philip, right? Or Caesar uh, Philip? Uh, Philip? Philip wasn't a Caesar. So then it, it was two different Herod's, places. Herod's son. Yeah. Yeah. So something for Caesar, something for Pan. Yeah. Some, probably a couple other Greek gods. So something I hadn't Greek recognized is, uh, is that apparently like, uh, one of the commentators was saying, um, or actually this was from the Holman Bible Atlas, which is a really cool reference if you ever get a chance to snag one to be able to go and see some different geographical facts and stuff. Holman Bible Atlas um, pointed out that that Jesus would often go up here kind of as an escape, um, mm. a, a moment away from Herod Antipas rule. So it's like kind of getting out of Dodge a little uh, bit yeah. whenever it's heating up. And I just thought that was kind of an interesting little note. Yeah, that's very cool. And here... It's it's a wilderness, but it's much different than what we think of as the wilderness, like when Jesus was tempted, mm-hmm. the wilderness that the Israelites had to walk through. This is a, a lush area because of the, the springs that were there. Like thick grass, lush. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. Okay. That was that was the last context yeah. for me. So, yeah. So, and directly after what we're talking about today, uh, Jesus will tell people to take their cross up, and mm-hmm. follow him. And then the next chapter is the transfiguration. And so with that, it's kind of in, like this is a, a transition point in Jesus' ministry. This is like yeah. the last thing that happens before he starts really like letting the cat out of the bag for yeah. who he is and lets the word start spreading and then like is heading toward Jerusalem for yeah. the end. Yeah. All right. Matthew 16, 13 to 23. Uh, and for the most part, we're just going to follow Michael's uh Distinction, division of the verses as well. Anything else, context-wise? Nope. nope. Let's go. All right. Well, let's, let's hit it. it. 13 and 14. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Who do people say the Son of Man is? So, John the Baptist was um, Herod Antipas. Antipas. Oh. Antipas. 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 Dang, so guys, close. I'm going to get it one day. Um, that was his view personally. And then... Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Uh, so from one of the commentators I read, they said that Herod Antipas... Yeah! That was his view. That he... So that what he was, was his John view? the Baptist. And so like where it was like John the Baptist's spirit is... Oh, that uh, Jesus was... Yes. John the Baptist reincarnate? Yes. Or... Or, or the Son of Man uh, is John oh, the Baptist. Well, we'll okay. <laughs> um, and then Elijah was a Hebrew prophet who never died in the Old Testament. 
No yes. pig, but he never died. <laughs> yeah, I yesterday was he like, he's just this one guy who never died in the Old Like, hang on. Yeah, no, it's Double a pretty stop. big deal. Uh, Jeremiah was one of the major Full prophets. Stop. Huh? Sorry. I just caught myself because I realized I said double stop, and that's that's a music term, not, yeah. And I just kept talking over you, and then I was like, wait, maybe he's saying something super important so no, I can stop talking. No, I'm sorry. I was in it's, my head. Keep it's going. Fine. Um, Jeremiah, major prophet in the Old Testament, and one of the prophets. So this is where it would kind of have some, like, not division, but son of man. Normally, that was what Jesus called himself. So... Let's if, go in on this term. Yeah, I want yeah, to talk yeah, about yeah, the yeah, son yeah, of man yeah, term. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. but let me finish the one of the prophets. If they're calling Jesus, so the son of man, where it says here in verse 13. So for me, reading this contextually, one of the prophets, they're not just saying he is just some person or some man. He is at least a prophet. So he's bigger than just a regular mm. guy off the street. Okay, but son of man. So that would have a generally positive impression is what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Like, so people yeah. say, so you, your natural reading of it, you're saying that you would naturally read it as, he says, who are people saying that 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 the son of man referring to me mm-hmm. is? And they're like, well, I mean, you got to be something pretty cool. They say you're at least one of the prophets. Right, right, right. Okay. So with the son of man, we see that in Daniel 7 and Ezekiel. Which um, specifically in Daniel 7, we see this man on, um, why can't my brain work? Uh, That's not what the Son of Man said in Daniel. <laughs> no, I'll let one of you guys talk about it, though, because. Well, in, so in Ezekiel, you have like 93 uses of this phrase. Mm-hmm. And it's it's not really like referring to a, you know, a special being, right, in, in Ezekiel. But in Daniel... Um, and I guess I should say, backing up one more, it, w- it was a phrase that was used in their poetry throughout the Old Testament mm-hmm. as well. And it was usually used in like in some of their uh, parallelism where it would be like, um, what what is man that you're mindful of him and the son of man that you think of him or something like, something like that, where it would be kind of used to state the same thing. Um, but whenever That's you get to Daniel, Psalm I have it pulled up. One? I have Daniel 7 pulled up for that bit. Okay, so you want to share it? Yeah. So in Daniel 7, 13 through 14, I saw in the night visions and behold, with the clouds of heaven, there came one like a son of man. And he came to the ancient of days and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people's nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away and his kingdom, one that shall not be destroyed. So it seems to me that so Daniel uses it as one like the Son of Man, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And which I think is significant, and I think that's different because um, what it's saying is that like there's somebody if if we just take Son of Man just means human, mm-hmm. but then uh, and I think that's the right way to think about it. Mm-hmm. Um, that the up until this point it's been just used to refer to like what is the Son of what is the Son of Man like? You're a man, right? I yeah, am. you are. Darn right. What, what is your son? He is also a man. Yeah. And he is a son of man. Right. Yeah. So he's a son of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> I've never put that together, but I love that. I'm sure you've used it plenty. And it's been used against me. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think that's significant. So then in Daniel 7, whenever it gets there, it says one like the son of a man, meaning that he's not human, but he's something that has this divine authority, mm-hmm. but looks like a human. Yeah. Mm hmm. That's uh, when I was watching the Bible Project video on Son of Man specifically. They did just such a great job of talking about it. Uh, but the the coolest part for me was that they were talking that this uh, yeah that this is this human ascends to sit on the throne and r- co rule with God, and then the other host on the video said, "Oh, hold on a second, a human on the throne? There must be something else about this guy." And that's when they get to say, ah, yeah, 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 because he's, he's, he is a man, but he is the God man mm-hmm. that's coming. And, mm-hmm. um, and that's, and it's interesting too, because I don't think we saw anywhere where it, it, cause Daniel says something like a son of man, mm-hmm. where Jesus's word here is, who do people say that the son of man is? And when he referred to himself, he referred to himself as the son of man. Mm-hmm. And that's something, so it, 
it seems to be that from Daniel, so Daniel was in the the um, Babylonian exile, right? Um, so he, whenever Daniel wrote, it's like a mixture of stories and apocalyptic literature. Yeah. He has these visions that just peel back the curtain and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and so from that point mm-hmm. on, they're actually, um, Israel like doesn't end up back in there, like restored to glory or anything. They consider themselves to be, you know, like out of the, out of the land. They have not been able to like, the glory has not been restored mm-hmm. to the temple yeah. and everything, even after they rebuild it. Um, and then you end up with the, uh, like those intertestamental books being written like Enoch and the Maccabees and all that. Um, and so actually after Daniel, um, you do have the book of Enoch, first Enoch being written, um, like fourth Ezra, I think is the other one that references the son of man. And after Daniel, you start seeing this development of the son of man being like a title for an angelic or a a deified human yeah. or a humanized deity, however you want to think about that, um, this being. So it took on more of an actual title of the son of man mm-hmm. instead yeah. of just a son of man. Mm-hmm. After Daniel's. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And so what? Je- what's Jesus asking here? Who do people say that I am or who do people say that that figure is? The son of man. We had a fun conversation about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kind of my question was like, we see, we see here the the contrast is between who do people say that the Son of Man is, and then later he says, "But who do you say?" I'm sorry, but who do you say that I am? Yeah, mm-hmm. and so it's like, is he is he saying, is he swapping one variable, right, or right. two variables, right? Yeah. And so yesterday we really got to discuss this. Is like, th- is this the first part where he's ever called himself the Son of Man? And so we got to go mm-hmm. back into Matthew mm-hmm. and really discuss like discover like this is not the first time he is calling himself the son of man Mm -hmm. or son of man um yeah the son of man Mm -hmm. but we got to see whenever he says the son of man has authority and then he heals Mm -hmm. and yeah so then the question is just like had they made the connection yet so jesus obviously views himself as the son of man Mm -hmm. so is he quizzing is he quizzing the disciples about so this this person who's going to be the son of man who do people say that's going to be? Mm-hmm. Right. And then is he trying to get his disciples to connect those dots? So when they, they say, who do you say that I am? Was he uh, in a point trying to get them to the place of saying, oh, well, you're the son of man. Right. I kind of like that, honestly. I like, do too. Um, Literarily, especially. Because then the first thing out of Peter's mouth is you are the Christ. And so the son of man like ha- had taken on this messianic, quality through the apocalyptic literature and then that intertestamental period. And so it's like, if he's at first saying like, Hey, you know, just speculation, like what's the scuttlebutt around town? Like who, who do you guys <laughs> say? Um, like who do people say that the son of man is going to be? And they're like, yeah. Oh, they say it's going to be like, they say that John the Baptist was the son of man, yeah. or they say that Elijah's coming back. Or maybe it's like, maybe it's, you know, Jeremiah or one of the other prophets is going to come back and be the son of man. And he's like, but who do you say that I am? Yeah. And if that's a moment where it's like, oh, that's you, yeah. you know? Mm. So anyway, I'm, I kind of like that, but I would not fight you over it. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah, so Elijah's part that comes from Malachi 4, uh, as God says to Malachi, behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes, and he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. So there's this promise in Malachi that Elijah's going to be out there. So some are saying, maybe Elijah. Others are saying Jeremiah. This was a fun one, too, because kind of step back into those intertestamental books, the Apocrypha from the Catholic uh, Bible there. So they would have some of that. They would have read some of that. It's not like uh, they pro- they didn't see it as scripture per se, but they would have read some of that material. Right. And in uh second, uh, I think Estrus, mm-hmm. uh, I will send you help. My servants, Isaiah and Jeremiah, according to their counsel, I have consecrated and prepared for you. Uh, and then it, it goes on. Mm-hmm. And there, there's talk about in the Maccabees that Jeremiah came and gave uh, a sword to Judas Maccabeus uh, during their, struggle. 
So there's this idea, too, that Jeremiah is going to return. Mm -hmm. And so some are saying that. Or one of the prophets, Moses said in Deuteronomy 18, 15, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from among your brothers. It is to him you shall listen. So there are mm -hmm. all these ideas of people who are going to be sent back to the mm -hmm. people. And here it's just kind of a popcorn shot of people saying, of them saying, yeah, people are saying this and mm -hmm. people are saying that. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. I was just like, that was jogging my memory. Jesus refers to John the Baptist as Elijah yeah. as well. Uh -huh. So you have in Matthew 11, 13, 14, he says, for all the prophets in the law prophesied until John. And if you're willing to accept it, he is Elijah who uh -huh. is to come. Anyway, just interesting. Yeah. Um, okay, so even if we can't say, even if it's not a double switch, if right. it's just the, if they would have understood the son of man and um, I am to be just kind of interchangeable, they understand yeah. that he's referring to himself both times. Um, you still have like at them saying like, hey, the people, I mean, think you're pretty neat. I mean, you've, you've got some authority and like you're something special. Like the people know that you're not just a dude. Yeah. Um, you capital know, John D. The, He's the capital D dude. <laughs> um, John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, one of the prophets. So they're like, okay, that would be significant. Yeah. Nobody's just saying. Uh, so they're, they're not saying, um, yeah, you're just kind of a teacher. Yeah. Yeah. The John the Baptist one really confused me because he's just a few months older than Jesus. Mm -hmm. And he's dead by this point, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, yeah, that one confused me as well, which is part of what made me think like, I kind of prefer it, him refer, asking like whether John the Baptist was the son of man versus whether Jesus is John the Baptist mm -hmm. since right. they were contemporaries. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. that just feels weird to me, but yeah. Yeah. Who especially knows? since they saw those who saw John saw that he baptized Jesus. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I guess they could think i mean maybe maybe there'd be some of like the elijah passing the mantle on to elisha oh so maybe that would be another way to think about it like mm -hmm. maybe they think you receive the anointing of john the baptist hmm. and oh. his ministry i don't know i mean because yeah. it was the john saying i must decrease that he may increase yeah. mm -hmm. that's a very mantle passing kind of thing it was very i don't know just man a mantle passing <laughs> well, hey how about <laughs> verses 15 to 18 do it yeah. he said to them but who do you say that i am Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Pew, pew. That's powerful. I think of Michael talking about with a squirt gun every time. Gates of hell with a squirt gun? Yeah. Yep, that's yeah. what I think of. When you read this or when you hear him <laughs> say that. Just Gates of Hell. Ah, ah, I ah. hear Gates of Hell. I'm like, Michael talking about water gun. Uh, yeah, he, gun. and he's just talking about this place in Caesarea Philippi. If you travel to northern Israel with yeah. a squirt, squirt gun. Yeah. <laughs> that's the kind of courage we're looking for. Yes. I would go to northern Israel. <laughs> Some of you get so hyped up on Jesus, you'll buy a plane ticket. And go to northern Israel. With a squirt gun. With a squirt gun. So <laughs> Probably the, not on the plane. So verse 15, the you there is plural. So he's talking to all of the disciples, not just to specifically Peter here. So the who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? Okay, he's talking plural. to the 12. Um, who do y'all who do say that I am? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Yuns. Hmm? Yuns. Yuns. <laughs> <laughs> um, Simon Peter is normally called Peter, and he is the spokesman for the twelve. What was that? Do you for? think it's an, he's an appointed spokesman? Yeah, or was he just like a person who likes to talk a lot? Like he's this a guy? self appointed spokesman. Right. Self appointed yeah. spokesman. Right, right, right. And we know a thing or two about that. <laughs> Jay does. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a self appointed lots of things. Yeah, um, but this is the first time the disciples are claiming Jesus is the Messiah. Uh, through Matthew. So I just thought that was super neat. I didn't mention that yesterday, but mm. this is the first time we see him, them declaring he is mm -hmm. Messiah. Yep. Uh, what are you, are you going to start typing? Are you internally fact checking? That's, that's one of those times where one of us makes a face and she, in this audible format, doesn't just <laughs> write us a note and say, Hey, what's up? She calls it. Yeah. Verbalizes it. You did a yeah. face. 
Exactly. Okay. As the appointed host of this uh, podcast. Self-appointed. <laughs> <laughs> that is very, very true. Um, who? <laughs> Sorry, we both made the same noise. Oh, okay. Oh. Um, I love the fact that it goes. So I just, again, the contrast. Whenever we see up, up top, uh, who do people say the son of man is? And then here he's calling him the son of the living God. Yeah. Like, that's cool, right? So the son of the living God part was, also, it. yeah, it was also just in contrast to um, Pan. Like some have said, the God who is alive, unlike the pagan gods, specifically Pan, of the Caesarea Philippi, Jesus is the fulfillment of the Old Testament promise of a divine son um, as anointed king. And so like, they worship a living God, not a God that is dead uh-huh. or that doesn't exist. So. So you said this was the first time that the disciples did what? <laughs> called, called him, him Messiah. Jesus Messiah. Like that he is the Messiah. Oh, okay. Okay. Because when. So you're okay with that? So when um, Philip and Nathaniel are talking and Nathaniel says, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip says, well, come and see. And then Jesus reads Nathaniel's mail. And in John 1, 49, Nathaniel declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You're the king of Israel. So you're bringing up so, John 1, 49? I am. So that's not in chronological order. So you, you would say. She was say, saying specifically just in Matthew's gospel. In Matthew's oh, okay, gospel. Okay, 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 okay. But. I would think he would have caught, he, Nathaniel would have joined the band before this. But yeah, Matthew's gospel. I'm with you. I'm there. You can cut that, Parker. You know? No. I think, and again, just tracking with, um, tracking with, uh, you know, if Matthew really is making a big case for, um, for Jesus being the Messiah, then it would be, we mm. should think that it's kind of significant. Like when do his closest followers, mm. the closest friends and followers, like actually recognize this? Yeah. 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 Also, for those who do not know, and if you did know this, or whatever, Christ is not Jesus's last name. Did you Did you guys know that? Interesting. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, what is it then? Christ can mean Messiah or anointed one. Mm-hmm. Mm. Christ is the Greek translation of the anointed one. Right. Yeah. And you- again, Bible Project has a cool podcast series on the meaning of the anointed one. Uh, so we won't spend that time here again. But the Bible Project, Anointed One, mm-hmm. podcast series. Click on that link. <laughs> yeah, click that link. <laughs> In the Not an affiliate link. <laughs> but yeah, but so I th- I think it's so cool there that you're the you're the Christ, the Son of the Living God. So I didn't I didn't connect these dots yesterday, but but Peter is saying you're the Christ, right? Uh, Yeshua Bar Yahweh. Uh-huh. And then Jesus says, well, blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah. Ah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So in case wait, you were not wait, tracking wait, wait, with wait. that train of logic, yeah. Bar-Jonah, whenever he says, blessed son. are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, the Bar-Jonah means that he was the son yeah. of Jonah. Simon, son of Jonah. Uh, Jesus Just said, son of the living God. Yeah. yeah. Jesus, son of God. Yeah. I liked the contrast of Simon Bar-Jonah to, but my father who is in heaven so the contrast between those two, and I didn't catch the son of the living God part. That's mm-hmm. good. That's cool. I like uh, it. The blessed are you. So that's Makarios. Um, it can mean happy mm-hmm. or uh, or blessed. And it's um, we, we were kind of talking about like what exactly is it referring to? Because um, it's not saying like he's not saying like, hey, gold sticker, good job, <laughs> man. But he's actually acknowledging the fact that like the the fact that. Simon was able to say this is actually evidence of, of the fact that he has been blessed mm-hmm. by God. Mm-hmm. You're blessed because you've been able to say, I'm Christ. Right. This He's is not... how I know that you're blessed. Yeah. Right. So not that I, you're going to receive a blessing because you said this, yeah. Yeah. but here's how I know that you're blessed. Um, and it's similar to like, you know, blessed are the peacemakers and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's not so much like, hey, um, make some peace so that you can be blessed, but it's like, happy are this is it's like this is the good life yeah. is mm-hmm. living in the kingdom and mm-hmm. the kinds of people who live in the kingdom are peacemakers mm-hmm. um so i i just and, tied yeah, to that not an emotionally happy not an um, like it's not a happy versus sad versus but it's that oh. deeply anchored yeah um, it's like i even 
this is like off topic, but it's like, I do think there is some of the emotional happiness there sure. too. So it's like, I think sometimes people make a little bit too much of a distinction oh. between the joy yeah. and happiness. Uh-huh. It's like, I do think like whenever, whenever we are firmly found in Christ, I think we can experience even the emotional happiness. Not that it's all the time and stuff, yeah. but I do think, you know, yes. we, we should expect that. Uh, I mean, scripture refers to God as the happy God. Mm. So anyway, just a thought. That's really good. What about the rock? Uh, uh, you weren't there yet? No. Um, just going back to the Simon, son of Jonah. Simon has a natural father, Jonah, but his ability to confess Jesus came not from the flesh and blood source, but the father who is heaven. So flesh, but, father okay. in heaven. There you go. Thank you. Not who is heaven. Uh, flesh and blood means human, like fleshly things. It's just... Not like yeah. sinful flesh, just like right. natural material. Yeah. Natural material. Yeah. Yeah. So. And so again, uh, I mean, I always uh, pay attention to, oh man, I'm. we've gotten called out on history stuff. We've gotten called out on math <laughs> stuff. I might be getting ready to get called out on English stuff. Ooh, let's yeah. do it. Yeah. And, but, and, or. Those are conjunctions, right? In, but, and, and or. And, but, and, or. Conjunctions? Conjunction, con. Junction. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Use words, uh, a word used to connect clauses or sentences or to coordinate words in the same clause. And, but, if, or. Okay, sweet. I I was just like. Got you, English people. Uh, (laughs) You Googled it. Um, So again, like, if (laughs) if you were to look at my screen right now, you'd see that every conjunction in the passage is highlighted red. Just because it... um, Guys, I wish you could see this. It's so red. (laughs) It is very red. (laughs) Red of reds. And the reason I do that is because it it shows how the propositions in the passage are tied together, whether they are like continuing a thought, Mm. elaborating on a thought, or providing contrast. And so um, we've got one in verse 15. He said to them, but... Who do you say that I am? Mm -hmm. So then we should see like he's introducing, this is now a a new proposition. It's in contrast to what they say. What do you say? And then um, down here we have uh, for for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. So that for uh, would be another example um, where we've got uh, blessed are you for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who's in heaven. So that's again where I would bring in the like the reason he is. Uh, Jesus is saying he's blessed is because God's revealed it to him in heaven. And for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. Mm -hmm. And so what I love about that is um, this kind of like ties it up nicely up top. The people who are observing things about Jesus were observing what they could see with flesh and blood. They're observing the fact that he's a good teacher and he's Mm -hmm. performing miracles and they're discerning by their, their material senses that he at least has to be a prophet. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. And he's saying, but instead of what you can see with just your eyes, my father who is in heaven has revealed this to you, this spiritual reality that I am the Christ, the son of the living God. Oh, man. And? And uh, I tell you, you are Peter and on this rock. Anyway. Now we can talk about Peter, right? What so, about this rock? So Peter actually means rock. So Petra is a feminine name in Greek. it's a feminine word yeah so petras is the greek for rock mm-hmm. and that's feminine but um peter you wanted to give it more of a male name so peter what math nope. that's nope. not exactly the way that worked matthew probably wouldn't have matthew wouldn't have well so in greek so p so there's like yeah, wordplay going on here go. right so peter uh, Peter's name is very, very similar to the word for rock in, in Greek. Like mm-hmm. it's um, that basically rock is the feminine form yeah. and Peter's name is the masculine form. And so you can think like, wait, is Jesus just making a word play or is he like trying? Is it something's clicking for you? here? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Because yeah, um, I was same. like, wait, no. Well, I was like, wait, so did he receive his name Peter here? But I don't No. No, he didn't. And the same it's is fine. in... Was it Aramaic we were talking about? In Aramaic, it's exactly, exactly the same word. Yeah. So like I, I've seen like arguments to try to say like, oh, he, he uses two different words. And that's he's trying to draw out a nuance of like Peter's name is this is this one uh, Petros or whatever. And then there, I, I can't I'm not going to I'm not going to butcher the Greek. Yeah. I'm not a Greek right. uh, student. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. like it is different. And the word for rock is feminine versus Peter's name is masculine because he's a dude. Yeah. Um, 
but if you go if you go back to the Aramaic, it's actually just the same word. And yeah. Aramaic is what Jesus would have been speaking right. to him. Greek is how it was recorded. Oh, because Matthew likely spoke in Greek, where Jesus likely spoke in Aramaic. Well, if Matthew wrote in Greek. Yeah, he would have spoken. So they would have, oh, they would have both so known confusing. some Greek. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. So, but so it's the idea of the language you speak at home versus the language you speak out. So for us, we we know that in school. In, in English class, we're not supposed to talk. We're not supposed to use the word ain't. We're not supposed to use, you know, too many negatives in a sense. Mm-hmm. But then you get home and you're talking, you know, mom, I, I ain't never seen no uh, chickens with bare bellies. <laughs> Aww, <laughs> talking about my kid. So that's weird. Uh, so the, even here, even those of us who only speak English, we st- we have different dialects, different yeah. languages that we speak at right. home versus. And so yeah. here, uh, Greek would have been spoken for the the area, especially when different cultures would come into a, a city to trade, and they were, that was a common language for that. But then at home, and with a bunch of guys who also just spoke were from Capernaum and mm-hmm. that area, then they're they're dropping into Aramaic because that's their that's their heart language. Okay. Mm-hmm. Also, this is the first and only time in Matthew where Peter is called Simon Peter. In verse 16, Simon Peter, first and only time mm. he is called that in Matthew. Very cool. Okay. But, and so as much as much conversation as people have about well, what this, what is this rock? And is Peter the rock or is the rock his confession or is the rock uh-huh. Jesus? Uh, it's interesting here back in when you look in the original language that Peter is the subject of the sentence. Rock is the indirect object and church is the direct object. So Jesus is talking about building the church mm-hmm. and he's talking, talking to, to Peter about building the church. The church mm-hmm. is the thing that's going to be built and what the church is built on, whether it is Peter, the dude who is going to lead the church until yeah. what acts acts two, is it, it acts? Two? Well, yeah, but he's uh, leading until it transitions to Paul's story. Mm-hmm. So Peter, uh, it, it's uncomfortable language, but Peter's the star of acts until, mm-hmm. until Paul shows up transitions to, yeah, transitions yeah. to Paul. Uh, so, and he continues leading the church. Or it's just like the story kind of like right. changes yeah, focus because yeah, yeah. he's still just as influential. Yeah. Yeah. The camera picks and zooms over to Paul and then yeah. takes off with him. But yeah, Peter is still mm-hmm. one of the one of the pillars that Paul would later say. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he mentioned um, Peter and John and uh, maybe James, his brother, uh, as pillars of the church. And I can't remember where that was. I heard <laughs> Sam Storms talking about that. But um but yeah, so whether or not we get we get so caught up in what's the rock, is Jesus, the confession, the man, that we forget that the main object is Jesus is going to build his church. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so what if it's the man, this hot headed, mouth footed, quick to speak, quick to mess up, cut man. off the ears. Yeah, quick to quick to <laughs> slice an ear. Uh, so uh, in mouth-footed? my head, mouth footed, mouth footed. I think yeah. I'd have to say foot mouthed, foot mouthed, mouth footed. So if you put your foot in your mouth, are you foot mouthed? Or are you mouth footed? Stephanie? I'm not even I'm like, I don't get it. If you say mouth footed, I just envision feet with, with mouths, mouths on them. But foot mouth means that's a foot with a mouth in it. Stephanie says that we don't have time to talk yeah. about this. Yeah, we're at fifty two minutes and we still have a lot of verses. Okay. Pointing at the clock. So you would rather us care about the clock then okay. Okay. I will build so, my church I so I love Jesus language here and this is something like as a pastor who like I'm you know I get to be a part of like being responsible for this church but at the end of the day I should not call it my church right yeah. and uh, and I think that's just something like even linguistically like I want to be careful about mm. because like whenever I'm I'm praying and stuff I'm just like Jesus thanks for letting me like help shepherd your church yeah um and I think it's just a, a humble attitude uh, that we should have toward that. Oh, and I love the fact that he says, I will build my church. Because mm-hmm. there are some days, you know, like uh, being on staff at a church where I'm like, man, this didn't go the way I wanted right. it to. Or <laughs> right. like, are we making the kind of progress we were hoping with that? And I'm just reminded of Jesus saying like, I will build my church. Right. It's ownership. Mm-hmm. Like it's his church. It's not ours. And it's not anything like we can be doing things to help build the church. Absolutely. Yeah. But but he's going to do his. it. Yeah, it's He's going to do it, period. Yeah. Mm-hmm. From here. In, in, Full stop, not mm-hmm. double stop. Yeah. In comfortable America, <laughs> in in oppressed China to our brothers and sisters there, the church yep. is growing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because Jesus is building it. Right. So he is the art, 
architect of the church Mm -hmm. and Peter's Mm. authority is completely tied to Jesus's authority as the Christ, the son Mm -hmm. of the living God. Jesus Mm -hmm. alone is preeminent in this text. Ooh. Whoa. I like it. Hey, what about, what if we just, yeah. Is that where we were at? Yeah. Gates of hell. This was a really good part for me yesterday. Oh, really? Yeah. So if you're looking at it in context of like them hearing this and them being in that specific location of the gates of Hades, which we've talked about this before, I know maybe not on the podcast, but we've had conversation of like Hades is just, that's another way it could be translated or Sheol, which is a place of the dead. Um, So the gates of Hades, a place of power and evil and death. So that was for them. Um for them, not for like the Jews at the mm-hmm. time, like at the time, because uh, they would have viewed it as just a place you go to die. Mm-hmm. If somebody's wondering, tying the terms Hades and Sheol together, where would you, where would you point them? Yeah, so like in the Old Testament, a lot they used Sheol um, as, oh, that was like a common word. Um, I think wasn't it Job who talked about like send me to Sheol, which was just like the place of dead. Um, Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is meant to be of offensive, not defensive. So the church is alive and well. Look at where it was there, like at this point in time and now where it is. Like the church is still here where Pan is now like no more. Um, a place of worship for Caesar is mm-hmm. no more where all of those places are now ruins. The church is still thriving and mm-hmm. doing its work 2000 years later. Like. Like you were mm-hmm. saying, there's places in China and here where the church is growing, where those other religions have now ceased. So mm-hmm. death will not overpower the church. Yeah, so. that's so good. And and again, when you're thinking about the setting he was in and, and how good Jesus was at using the settings around him yeah. to, to tie those uh, ideas together that... That where else would he have talked about the gates of hell than mm-hmm. right where people say that that right that cave there you see with this with the spring rolling out that they think is the gates of hell? I'm going to build the church, and not even those gates would be able to prevail. Right? No, and that's like where they would throw sacrifices in, and yeah. just it's so cool to me that like that's now a ruin, and right. here we are now, mm-hmm. yeah, still two thousand years later yeah. talking about. That place that was destroyed. And yeah. the foundation yeah. that Jesus built. Yeah. Mm-hmm. An earthquake in AD 67 totally changed the water flow and, and the the uh, topography of that cave. And yet the church is still being built across the globe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like death cannot stop Jesus. And just, yeah, mm-hmm. it's good. Because mm-hmm. he rose. Yeah, he did. Sing it again. Nope. <laughs> How about... You ready to roll in? Nineteen. Sure. Let's go. Let's go ahead and ni- uh, nineteen to, through twenty-three, and we'll bind it all together. <gasps> and, okay, go on. I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed on the third day. I'm sorry. And be killed and on the third day be raised. Mm -hmm. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord. This shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God but on the things of man. Mm-hmm. So the you there in verse 19, it becomes singular again. So he is talking to Peter at this time and the keys of he- kingdom of heaven. So I didn't know this it was like the pearly gates reference, right? Where mm-hmm. no, 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 no. This isn't necessarily a pearly gates reference. It's where but... people pull the idea. Yeah. Of the right. Gates. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Yeah, You never, you never hear of Andrew being, uh, having the, it's always St. Peter. Yeah, right. always Peter, Peter. At the gates. Yeah, standing there, allowing people to come in, not come in. Um, so I just I didn't know that. Like a heavenly janitor with his ring of keys. Yes, yeah, slinging it around. Uh-huh. Yeah. What about binding and loosing? Hmm. We, there, so this is another, like, kind of confusing one. Like, some people tie 
spiritual significance as far as like demonic influence and stuff like that they can that can be bound or loosed um Mm -hmm. some people would tie it specifically like church authority um which i think that would be my personal Mm. bent on it is he's talking to some the pillars you know to peter and then it gets extended to the disciples and then i think would be extended to like the authority of the church Mm. as the whole now as well um that like the way that god um the the way that God has empowered authority to be his representatives on earth, like the church is one of those. And so like the church has the authority to allow people to be admitted in as mm. members into the church. And there's mm-hmm. a certain, um, and it's not like, it's not like we can, you know, a church leader can cut off your salvation, but it's serious. Like if you are in a spot of like being in rebellion against your church authority, mm. um, there's some, there's a measure of like that being out of line with what God wants for yeah. you. And so I see like there's some being some elements of like that the that the church leaders are not just that they actually have some authority behind them mm. that um you know to to bind and loose uh, from a teaching perspective yeah. which binding and loosing was a very common phrase at this time so, that rabbis would do yeah, yeah which for us it seems like kind of off hand like almost like where I did odd. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't understand necessarily what it meant. And it was like binding meant to prohibit and loosing meant to permit. And so just Mm -hmm. hearing those things, I was like, Oh, that makes sense. Um, and the key, like I'm going back to the kingdom of heaven. Cause like talking about like the pearly gates, it's saying that we all have authority to like those who are called to like proclaim the gospel. Like that's what we're supposed to be doing. And well, that would be one way. So that would be another way to right. another approach to it. Like, is he talking to Peter exclusively? Mm-hmm. Is he talking to Peter and the and the other, you know, 11 minus Judas? Rip. No, 12 minus Judas. 11. No, Peter plus 11. Oh, Peter minus, plus 11 minus yep. one. Yep. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of math. One, thanks. 11 minus yeah. One. Yep. Check that math. Emmy. Yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, so it could be it could be that he's talking about authority to them. It could be that he's talking about authority to uh, church leaders, mm-hmm. um, or it could be that he's talking about that, like, hey, from this point forward, like as you proclaim this message, right. what you're doing is giving admittance into the kingdom, right? Um, and which is kind of the view you're going at. But it's right. like I I would not say that you can necessarily say that that's what it meant. Yeah. I you think... liked you like the idea of it being the church uh, universal yeah. or A, the church authority structure, like Lo- so locally. Yeah. Okay. I do. Wait. I, um, Go, uh, talk about that more. Yeah. So I think just like. <laughs> Re- rewind a couple minutes on the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. No, you don't have that, to. I'm just like. That the binding and loosing would be specifically given to church leaders. Okay. Um, that, they, that they can give teaching that is authoritatively mm-hmm. like that's authoritative for their local congregation. And so we're not talking about like. A friend in our small group is sick and the people in their small group get together and pray for them and you're binding and loosing something there. Th- right. Those are separate ideas. Pray, praying, praying for somebody who's sick. Pray, I'm thinking of somebody like, in especially the in a, so to me, like I think of it largely in like a, um, a church authority structure and like the way that plays out in church discipline. Hmm. So when you have Paul talk about like con- confronting that divisive person once confronting them again uh, it, with this is within the church uh, within a local church. Yeah. Um, but the, like after the third time, like cast them out and give them over to Satan mm. um, that they might come to. So it's like, I think of that kind of thing of like that, that's, that's some intense um, language around that yeah. to say, turn it over to Satan. And I think that kind of pairs well with this binding and loosing. Yeah. Um, but there again, that's not written in right. stone either. There's, right. Yeah. We don't have a compendium to Matthew 16 that says this is actually what he meant. Right. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And so you guys out there, whatever your opinion is, we'd love to hear it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Unless you're making fun of our math and or grammar. Ugh. Then we're, yeah. we're going to hear it anyway. But. <laughs> <laughs> so they tell no one that he was the Christ. Um. I just think it's crazy that he's like, hey, don't tell anybody that I am that person. And you think it's crazy. You calling Jesus crazy right now? No. You said, uh, I think it's crazy. Because like it whenever 
Mm, Astounding. Like, why wouldn't he want people to know who he is? So then whenever we examine. Because he's crazy? <laughs> what are you saying, Stephanie? <laughs> yeah. Astounding. It's astounding. It's astounding. Yeah. It just throws me through a loop. <laughs> okay. Okay. Jesus is not crazy. He okay. was very sane. I don't. <laughs> so sane. <laughs> but so whenever we take it and like, uh, yep. No, I'm not I done. I you off. I'm sorry. You threw me off. But it's to. okay. It's fine. It happens very easily. I'm learning. So you're at, you're trying to figure out like why would he not want them to say that he was the Christ? Right. Because they would have viewed him still like as this political person coming in to do mm-hmm. the things and yeah. to knock him out and like yeah. take control again. Yeah. And yeah, and that, that he's not the... ready for like, not that he's not ready for it, but that's not his mission. He's wanting them to see the other. Yeah. They're not ready to spread the correct message. Right. So, yeah, don't talk before you know what you're talking about. Right. They you're, need not to really, learn... you're not really going to know what you're talking about until you get filled with the Holy Spirit. So mm-hmm. let's keep it quiet. Yeah. yeah. So they need to learn what that means first before they start saying it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I agree with that. I like it from that time. So yep. this was the time that Jesus started really showing his disciples that I'm going to have to be arrested and beaten and put on trial right. and die. Right. So this marks the conclusion of Jesus's Galilean, Galilean uh-huh. ministry and the beginning of his Jerusalem ministry and the beginning of his journey to Jerusalem to face the cross. It is the first of four times that Jesus predicts his arrest and crucifixion. In Matthew. In Matthew. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So thanks, guys. So at one point, Jesus sets his face on Jerusalem. This is kind of the precursor to that. He's starting to starting to head toward that direction because the end's coming for him. Mm-hmm. Earthly. Yeah. And the you already read Peter's reaction, right? Yep. yep. Okay. Yep. So I think Peter's reaction shows kind of exactly why he said hey, you guys aren't ready to tell right. people I'm the Christ. Yeah. Right. Like, so Peter's have this like theophany. Um, Ooh, good word. How about you? Yeah. So just a, is? just a, so a revelation from God. Um, about. Yeah. About who about, Jesus is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he's had this, this in, incredible moment. But still, whenever he says, you're the Christ, the son of the living God, he's not thinking suffering servant kind of Christ. He's he's thinking, wow, if the Messiah is actually the son of God as well, then he's going to really be able to kick butt. Yeah. Yeah. The one who's quick to speak, mm-hmm. quick to act, ready yep. for violence. The, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ready for general Messiah to come and take back his land. Mm-hmm. And so he rebuked him. The same word when Jesus rebuked the wind and calmed the storm. Uh, is the word that that Peter used here? Mm-hmm. I think Stephanie's getting ready to correct my use of theophany. Bring it on, Stephanie. No, it's just whenever I hear theophany, I don't think of it being a revelation of somebody getting something um, that God has revealed to them, mm-hmm. but a the, manifestation. A manifestation. So, yeah. A visible manifestation to humankind of God. Yes. Is what so it means. that was, that's not exactly the right term for me to use there then, if we're going to be precise. Uh, I mean, Jesus was a theophany, yeah. right? Yes. yes. I was thinking more, I was going along the lines of like, he had an epiphany. Right. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, About whoa, but it's more theos. than an, an epiphany because it's from God. And so I just went that direction. Yeah. Anyway, but doesn't really matter. I appreciate your your correcting my precision though. Far be it from you, Lord. Uh him saying, God forbid. I one of these things of what are you talking about? This mm-hmm. this is mm-hmm. not true. This shall never happen to you. And mm-hmm. maybe the the craziest part of this passage. Get behind me, Satan. You're a hindrance to me. Hindrance there. Uh, it, this is where I, I got my big idea earlier. The rock on which the church will be built has become a stumbling block. Yes. Yeah, so Peter goes from a rock to a stumbling block. Yeah. Just like that. It's amazing. In the in the span of a couple verses. Mm-hmm. Uh, so because it is uh, that hindrance that we're there is uh, a snare, a stumbling mm-hmm. block, a, a cause for error. Mm-hmm. 
For you're not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of men. Again, seems to be like up top, we see everybody, you know, we see that Peter is being applauded for recognizing something about Jesus that um, the things of man could not reveal about him, but only the things of God uh, could could show him. And now he's just flipped it right around. Yeah. He's looking at the things that flesh and blood yeah. look at and missing the things that the Father who's in heaven would say. Yeah. And he was, so just a few verses ago, he had his mind so much on the things of God that he was able to mm-hmm. see that Jesus is the Christ. Yeah. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the Son of Man that Daniel prophesied. He could see what everybody else was missing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but he also thought in this time, like, oh, man, that means I'm going to become, like, vice president to you or, Mm -hmm. like, in our day. Like, that's... His power was tied to Jesus' power. So, yeah. He's like, man, I'm just going to be second man in this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, for him to do that, the first man can't die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, He has to not only live, but he has to conquer. Yeah. Makes sense. Man. And that's... I I, I had wrote there, too, that, that herein lies the problem with the church. We come across hypocrites because we claim, uh, I'm sorry, we come across as hypocrites because we claim to be the people of God, but have our minds on the things of men. Yeah. Uh, oh, she sent us a message. <laughs> and so I'm she's yelling at us. To read uh, it. Can she talk? Yes, please. And, and so it's interesting here that, that Peter would be the first pope. <laughs> That's what people have assumed is that he was the first pope. That's what it like, because he is the rock. Um, but it shows that he is infallible because infallible means like they don't make mi- or it's of making mistakes or being wrong. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Infallible, like, yeah. I think inf- you're saying it the wrong way. Yeah. Infallible means like they don't, they make, don't it, make mistakes. Right. But yet Peter did. So, yeah, this would be like one of the foundational texts used by the Catholic incapable Church. Incapable of making a mistake. There it is. Yeah. Incapable. You got it. Woo. Foundational text used by the Catholic Church to say that Peter was the first pope. Um, but again, we see here like, Hey, that's not, maybe not a great choice if, you know, Peter immediately turns around and missed it this bad. Mm-hmm. So. And then and we, he missed it bad. We also got to talk about Satan here, um, as well. Yeah, we did. She's <laughs> <laughs> we got to talk about Satan. Yeah. Nathan I don't know if that was, are you accusing him? <laughs> I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Oh, I Satan. think she was saying, get thee behind us, Nathan. Satan. <laughs> Whoa. I would never. <laughs> you've, you've never been a stumbling block for me, man. Thanks, man. Yeah. So Satan meant, um, so sometimes it was used like more generically just to refer to an adversary. It was mm-hmm. the, like in, um, in Hebrew or Aramaic, it meant, it just meant adversary, adversary. but yeah. also it was used as a proper name for, you know, the particular angelic fallen being that's the leader of demonic forces and stuff and that's what's actually being used here he's not just saying hey like why are you opposing me satan but he's actually tying like this this work that opposes his mission he's tying it to like the work of satan himself yeah 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 i wanted you to say it because my note said that he it was like just the adversary so i wanted you to Mm. talk on it because i yeah yeah. okay I mean, I he, is the, he is the adversary. Right. Capital A. Yeah. Yep. Man, anything else? Just the very end um, with him not setting your mind on the things of God, but things of man. So this is a perfect example of how a sincere heart coupled with man's thinking can lead to a disaster. Mm. A sincere heart coupled with man's thinking can lead to disaster. So you're, you're kind of tying that to... up. Up, up above, top. we see right. what seems to be a sense of your heart. Right. Could have been a flash in the pan moment, too. <laughs> Who knows, like, exactly where Peter's heart is. Mm. But, oh, man. Anything else for the text? What are you excited to hear, Nathan? I really liked... So, it. we kind of spent a minute at the end of Exegesis going around and talking about, like, how this ties into the topic of hypocrisy. And... um. I like seeing here um, that even the like early apostles who walked with Jesus, who trained with him for um, a period of time and stuff, um, like 
he he chose to entrust um like the building of his church to them um but they were like very flawed people and like we don't see that just go away even after like it would be easy to say like oh once they get the holy spirit surely it's all good but then Mm -hmm. um there's still issues yeah after that you have uh paul getting into a fight with i think barnabas over john Mm -hmm. mark Mm -hmm. and they end up parting ways and stuff you end up with peter like disassociating with the Gentiles and just siding with the Jews at one point because he's afraid of like public opinion of him. And Paul calls him out because he says his conduct was not in line with the gospel. That's in Galatians two. And so I, but both times after both with Barnabas and with Peter, Paul raises them up in his words and talks, talks positive and uplifting about them. Right. Yeah. In those moments they were knocked down drag outs. Yeah. So I think what I what I like about that is just seeing the imperfections mm. of the even the foundational like Ephesians two says that the the church is built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, um, and so seeing those imperfections even there that it's not the perfection of the vessel or the messenger um, that makes the gospel true and worthwhile, but it's the mm. perfection of like Jesus Christ Himself. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that's kind of what I'm excited about. Yeah, and. And how important it is for us to be honest about our shortcomings, yeah. to be humble in them, and to keep our minds on things of God yeah. as we're working through this so that we're not stumbling blocks to those around us. Yeah, uh, I think that has been an eye-opening moment for me is uh, this this idea of, you know, where where are my blind spots? Where are my places where mm-hmm. I need to focus and, and keep my minds on the things of God, to keep my mind, to keep my eyes fixed on Jesus and not the things of man. Mm-hmm. That's about you. Uh, yep. Mine is like kind of uh, just a thing about both of yours. I, I love the aspect of here that it's not us that does the work necessarily like we're supposed to be doing the work yes like spreading the gospel and helping people follow jesus but he will build his church and so i find comfort in that that Mm -hmm. i'm not going to mess it up for god Mm -hmm. Mm. yeah so awesome anything else not for me all right guys thanks so much for listening you guys put wind in our sails Wow. Uh, so keep keep writing, keep I making agree. fun, keep correcting. Uh, if you know how to to pronounce Mount Hermon, let us know. Uh, we sure appreciate you. And uh, man, share it with a friend. Email us, warehouse at cornerstone.team. And we will see you on the flippity flop. Hey, say bye, Nathan. No, bye. I thought you were going to do the thing, the ending. Mount Hermon. Mount Hermon. <laughs> She thought I was going to do the thing uh, that uh, until next time, the warehouse is closed. That's, that's the thing. That's the thing. It was good. Mount Herman.